Hey guys, it's Kelly at threeboysandadog.com. Um, today, I'm super excited. Today we have Holly from Business to Blogger and like nine million other things. So before we get started talking about how to find giveaway sponsors, talking about advertising, talking about the repitch and all that good stuff, I'm going to take a minute to introduce myself because Crystal gets on to me and then, <laughs> and then Crystal can introduce herself and we'll move on to Holly. So I'm Kelly at threeboysandadog.com, the number three, boysandadog.com. I've been blogging since November 2006. I've been at Three Boys and a Dog since December 2009. So um, I feel like I have a lot of information because I've picked it up through the years. And I love doing these weekly hangouts and sharing all my information with you. And I love inviting in um, experts on different topics like Holly down there. So <laughs> without further ado, Crystal. Well, I am Crystal from crystalandcomp.com, mom of all boys. We live in Dallas. Holly is my neighbor, not really like next door, but, you know, same Metroplex. And I, today is going to be so awesome. I am super, super duper excited. A lot of the things that we're going to talk about today really build on all of the things that we've talked about with you guys so far. And you're going to see how this just all starts to come together for your blog. Um, I blog at, like I said, at crystalandcomp.com about uh, mom advice, easy recipes, how to meal plan, <coughs> solutions and resources mostly. Um, and find me there and find me here. And Kelly and I have been doing these uh, Google Hangouts. What is this, Kelly? Week number Sweet. nine or ten? Nine. Okay. And basically we just wanted to pay it forward. You know, in the, the years that we've been blogging, my blog will be five years old this month. And... Uh, We've learned a lot along the way, and I've said it a hundred times, but I'll say it again. Kelly was my greatest mentor, and uh, she I've held on to her for dear life, as I've said, and she's helped me along the way, and, and it's gotten to a point where we've really grown off of each other, and our sites uh, generate traffic for one another and bounce traffic back and forth. So we're going to share that stuff with you along the way. All right, and now let's introduce Miss Holly Comer. Hi everyone, I'm Holly Homer and I um, started a blog at June Cleaver Nirvana, which is kind of a personal blog about me and my three boys. And I might mention that between the three of us, we have 11 boys. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so there might be something to that whole boy mom thing. But anyway, <laughs> like we need to get out and get on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so I also um, I blog at Kids Activities blog and I run a local website called She is Dallas here in Dallas but kind of what we're talking about today is my role at Business to Blogger. Um, I started Business to Blogger a few years ago because of what we're going to talk about today. It just seems like finding the right person, finding a company and a blogger to work together sometimes is a difficult situation. So that's, I'm excited to talk about that today because I, I think matchmaking is what I do best. <laughs> that's what you are. That's right. You are basically a blogger business matchmaker. I never thought about that till just now. Look at you. Go, go, go. Okay, Kelly, get us started. Uh, me? No, yeah. you're getting us started. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the, the main topic for today Really, there's a lot that we could talk to you forever about working with brands, uh, working with uh, sponsorships in general, uh, how to get giveaways and things like that for your blog. Um, this is something that we could probably break up into two or three different Google Plus Hangouts. There is so much information. But today what we're going to start with is talking to you about how to start working with those brands. And we thought it was the perfect opportunity to bring in a matchmaking blogger company like Holly Homer, who can kind of give us some insight on what I'm interested in her sharing with us today, how her business works, what her business looks for with bloggers, kind of give you some insider information and tips. And by the end of this Google Plus Hangout, you are going to be well equipped, well equipped to go out and secure your first uh relationship with a brand if you haven't done that yet. So Holly, if you can just kind of introduce, I know you've already introduced yourself, but if you can kind of introduce us to Business to Blogger for those who may not have heard about it or those who are new to this element in the community. 
That sounds really good. And what I'd like to do is kind of tell you how it came about because I think it makes a lot of sense once you realize um, why <laughs> why we started it. So um, I have been blogging for maybe maybe a year and a half and two years. Um, things back then were very different. There weren't nearly the opportunities floating around the internet that there are now. And so, um, but I started getting pitches, you know, and it was kind of a, you know, that was like really new back then. Um, and and people would, you know, email me, hey, I know your readers might want to know about this, or would you like to do a giveaway? And I didn't do a lot of those things. Um, and so it was always something that was like, ooh, that's really cool, but it doesn't fit my blog. And so I started sending them on to my friends, um, like, you know, hey, I know, you know, Rachel might want to do this, and, you know, Shonda might want to do this. And so, and as the more, as that kind of progressed more and more, where I was actually sending those things out maybe twice a day, I was like, somebody's got to organize this. Like, this is kind of ridiculous that um, all these things are coming to me because they're finding me, but they're not, they're not taking that second step to know what would fit on my blog. And, and just because it's not a good opportunity for me doesn't mean it's not a good opportunity. You know, we all blog for different reasons, and I think we'll talk more about that as we go along. So that's where Business of Blogger came about. It's like, it's kind of an organization of that. I was like, what if you could just post what kind of blogger you're looking for, the blogger could come and look and see all the different jobs that are available, and then they could like choose what was a good fit with their blog and kind of apply. And so that's where, over the years, the Business to Blogger job board came about, where now companies for free can come post a job on the board. It doesn't have to exchange money. It could exchange a book. It could exchange, you can exchange anything you want to. You just have to be able to explain it. <laughs> like, and there's no, at, at one point we had some sort of money value attached to it, but we took that off because like, you know, whatever people want to do, it may be a match. Who am I to say it's not a good, you know, it's not a good job because it's just a depending on who the match is. And so um, that's what we have. So the, the companies can post the job for free. We have now 9,200 bloggers in our database that we, I send out an email to. I send out emails once a week just to remind them about what's on the job board. And there's featured jobs that are highlighted in that email. And then, you know, obviously not all 9,200, but like a, a good percentage of those come look at the job board figure out what might work for their job, for their blog, and then they can apply with really one click now um, with our new system where, you know, say, oh, that book review looks really interesting to me. I will go ahead and apply to that. So on the other side, which can give some bloggers some insight on how things are being chosen, is I'm not involved in that at all unless I'm running the campaign. But the business, it's all self-serve. So they can go in and they can say, oh, look, I've had 32 applicants for this book review. Um, what they see on the other side is your um, the number of Twitter followers you have, the number of Facebook likes. They have your cloud score, um, your self-reported traffic, your self-reported page rank, your Alexa ranking. All those things, where you live and what type of blog you write, all those things they see and then they'll go through that and say, oh, you know, these five look like people that we might want to get to know a little bit more. And then the businesses pay about three, between three and five dollars per blogger to get your information, your contact information. So then they can contact you directly. And what I always tell companies that work with us is I always say, budget, you know, 30 to 40 percent more than you expect. Like if you're thinking, about 10 bloggers, then budget for, for 13 or 15 bloggers. Because once you get that contact information, you're going to go to their blogs and sometimes you'll say, oh my gosh, that's a total good fit. And then sometimes you'll say, ah, that may not be the person for me. And so that's where that kind of that matchmaking comes into, um, is was once you get past those stats and stuff like that. So then you're like, well, what if I have really poor stats? <laughs> you know, like I have no chance. But that's not true. That's one of the reasons why we took away the money, the monetary value requirements, is because as a beginning blogger, then you can go work with companies for a little bit of nothing to get experience, just like you do an intern internship at a job or something like that. Is learn how to write um, book review posts, learn how to do a simple review that may only be worth three or four dollars, learn how to you know 
those type of things. And then you have a resume built up of companies that you worked with and sponsored posts that you've done. And it gives you a really good way of stepping up to, um, once you get more traffic, to some of the bigger experiences. And, and I want to talk about that. I want to touch base on that real quick. <clears throat> size really, <laughs> okay. size really doesn't matter. You know, all these ladies that are the, um, what are they, the Maytag moms or something like that, you know, I applied for that. And at least half of the ladies that got it are half my size. So, obviously I wasn't a good fit for them, but not because of my size. Um, so you guys need to remember that and don't just not apply for this stuff because you're small. Because if your site is really good, then they're going to see you as, you know, potential or whatever and they could work with you so that that link stays on your site as you grow. They can reach out to you at a smaller price and it'll still be there three years from now when you're this huge household name. So just remember, like, like Holly said, size doesn't really matter. <laughs> it doesn't really matter and the other side of that is sometimes um, like businesses or PR companies have a blog in mind. Like you know they go in and they think I need 10 mom bloggers and they think oh mom blogs look like this. And so what happens is I give them a list of, um, of bloggers that whose stats just are crazy out of control and I can't even believe I found 10, you know, with Alexa rankings under 100,000 and stuff like that, you know. And they go and they say, these aren't who we're looking for. And so a lot of times um, what I'll say is, okay, let's, because a lot of times their ideal blog may not have the traffic. You know, their ideal blog is something that is, you know, maybe, some, uh, you know, a mom at home writes for just her friends and family. And so a lot of times I try to mix those with the higher traffic ones in the same campaign because that's what the client has in their mind that they want. Um, even though they don't really realize that when they go with just all those, they're, they're sacrificing traffic. So if you do a little bit of a mix. So sometimes there's opportunity for both in that same exact pool. And don't you think sometimes, Holly, I think this is kind of where you're going with part of the smaller blog is sometimes brands really want a, a small blogger who has a very personal community, who is very small and connected, and that sometimes for a brand, depending on the purpose of their campaign or what the end result is, but especially like a grassroots campaign, mm -hmm. they really want it to be a small community opposed to this big blogger that maybe the readers don't even see every post because there's so much content on there, right? Yeah, and a, a lot of times they have in their brain what percentage of sponsored content they want to see on a blog, and often it's unreasonably low. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they'll go and say, well, she's written, she's working with too many brands. You know, like, she can't, she can't spend enough time with me. And, you know, so, like, I have that conversation because that's a double-edged sword. The reason why she's um, working with so many brands is because she's working with so many brands. You know, like, it's a really good thing. But on the other hand, for some things, that's not what they're looking for. And so that's, like, as a blogger, I know, like, sometimes I take that personally. <laughs> like, right. like, come on, I'm perfect for that, you know. But, like, or my traffic smashes those girls. But on the other hand, that's... I'm not, like, it's more about the match. Like, I'm not what they were looking for for that. Um, so it, we can't take it personally because it right. is a business transaction to a certain extent is that we have a product and they're coming and using that product. So they're really, we can't get hurt feelings over that. <laughs> right, right. Well, and at the end of the day, I think part of the beauty of it in having you who understands the blogging community because you're a blogger, who also understands the business side because you're running businesses as your blog or your blogs as businesses, you have this opportunity to be that spokesperson for us mm -hmm. and build that relationship and help that company that didn't want the big blogger or help that company that didn't want the small blogger or help that company that didn't understand how sponsored stuff really works in the blogging world and to really, um, you know, grow that relationship so that you do have that end result where, you can run a campaign with big and little and everything in between and have a very satisfied client at the end of the day who then wants to come back and duplicate that success again. 
Yeah, and I really see a lot of what I do on a daily basis as education. And, you know, I kind of feel like I'm like the liaison or, you know, the ambassador between two countries. But mm -hmm. um, because there is a lot of misconception, um, and you have to remember, like, where a lot of the people who are running blogger campaigns for companies, they come from marketing and PR and advertising, but their backgrounds are all very different. Whereas we entered this field from the blogger aspect with completely different backgrounds. And so like that language sometimes is really, really difficult to translate um, as far as, and this is something I always talk about. When, when you're running a blogger campaign or you're working with bloggers, unless you are you know, running a huge campaign with a huge budget and you are paying people a good amount of money, you are basically running a volunteer organization. And because you are not changing their life in any way with you're not paying them enough for a salary, you are you are basically asking them to volunteer for a little bit in return. And so my <laughs> quite honestly, my experience managing volunteers has been more helpful to me than managing employees you know, in my past. Like I used to run, I'm a physical therapist and I used to run physical therapy clinics. And um, so I had employees and I had that, that great experience, but not necessarily applicable to what I do today. <laughs> where, where I volunteered, you know, in the medical alliance or the PTA. Those are the types of things that I really find helpful because you cannot force someone to do something, especially when they're across the country and you've never met them in your life. But you can figure out ways that they, that you have kind of a volunteer basis where you're giving them enough and they're giving you and you're, you're treating it like a volunteer situation. So if I have a, a company that wants 10 blog posts, I hire 12 bloggers. And that way I don't like, because I'm, there's always, there's always the mom that has the kid that got sick. Or, oh, we had to go out of town, my husband, you know, my husband had to do this. I mean, because this isn't their full-time job, this is lowest on the totem pole. And we have to be respectful of that, unless we're paying them so much that it is their salary. I, so, I am so happy that you said that. That is so true. Go ahead, Kelly. I'm sorry. No, you're fine. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say, it is true. And we need to remind moms that, you know, there is no book review worth putting your family last. So, I mean, at the end of the day, it's a book review, and yes, it's a great relationship to build, um, but our kids and our husbands and our homes, obviously, are what need us the most. Yeah, and there's ways that we can help companies work with us better. Like, one of the things that drives me insane is a lot of the things that we're offered, I feel like we are on the bottom of the totem pole. Well, we couldn't get it on the traditional media. We invited all these people, but they couldn't come, so let's invite bloggers at the last minute. And so, if... But if you give a mom a timeline that's appropriate, likely she will schedule it two or three weeks ahead of time so that if something happens that day and her child gets sick, that post still goes live. Mm -hmm. And, you know, things like that, being respectful of their time, just like you would anything else, it really helps improve your follow-through and that kind of thing. Okay, so let's talk about how. How do you get started? Let's, you know, we have... 61 people RSVP'd for this today, and so everybody wants to know how they can find giveaway sponsors, product reviews, and advertisers. So how can we do that? How do, how do we get started doing that? Crystal, how did you get started doing product reviews? Well, I got started very differently. Kelly and I have shared our stories over the phone with each other, but um, before we bring Holly's input into all of this, I think we should share how we got started. I did my first review by um, a friend who did just, uh, what's it called? Um, it works, which is like a body wrap thing. And um, she sent me a product to try and she was a, an independent rep for them. And I reviewed her product and gave one away. And then I knew someone who sold homemade gourmet did the same thing with them. And I kind of did it that way um, where they were just, you know, they were giving me a product to try. I shared my review with my blog because in my head I needed to build this resume to show brands that I could review their products. I had no idea, you know, I'm asking Kelly questions about building stats and analytics and stuff, and I never thought to ask her, 
<clears throat> where do I go to get giveaway stuff? And finally she said, girl, there are sites for this. Well, <clears throat> excuse me, one of the first, one, the first company that I worked with was Holly's company. And I went in and there was the local Chevy thing. And um, I, I knew of Holly, but I didn't know her at the time. And they were looking for moms to review the Chevy Malibu. And we were not paid for that. That was just something where we truly uh, were given a car to drive for a month and share it from a mom's perspective. And we had these missions to do. And I thought, wow, the chance to work with North Texas Chevy dealers, how, how awesome is that? And so that's where, you know, and then I kind of started building a relationship with, with, Kelly, or with uh, Holly and Business to Blogger. And from, you know, I've done book reviews over from business to blogger. I've done, there was a puzzle company that um, initially the job post on your board, Holly, was to review one of their puzzles that had a child's name in it. And now when he makes a new product, he'll contact me. Hey, I'm making a new product. Can I send you one? You know, he has sent me so much stuff that now I request stuff for, you know, Mason, my nephew's birthday is coming up. So I get a puzzle for him or whatever. But they, he realizes the value in, and there's no money being exchanged. He realizes the value in what I can provide for his business to, to connect with other moms all over, you know, the world wide web. So that's kind of how I got started. Kelly, how, how did you get started? I got started. Whenever I got started, of course, you know, I've been doing it for like a million years. And when I got started, there was no such thing as business to blogger. Um, there were like two maybe maybe two maybe three companies where you could go put your name in the hat and hope to you know win this product that you could review or whatever so and you had to have like some ridiculous amount of stats and I don't remember what I had at the time like 500 unique visitors or something and I'm like <laughs> I'm so awesome I have 500 <laughs> unique visitors but you know, you started out with one anyway so I started out, I went through my house and I looked at all my different things and I thought, who do I want to work with? Who, who do I want to contact me so that I can work with them and do awesome review stuff where they'll send me stuff for free. And so I chose different things that were like larger. Like I did several posts on craft products. They were my own items that I purchased with my own money and I wrote up a review on my site. Um, I did some pants that I had gotten that were really awesome and so I wrote reviews on my own stuff because that's what I wanted to be. I wanted to be at the time I wanted to be a review blogger. I make jewelry and so I actually made some pieces and gave them away on my site in the hopes of increasing some of my traffic and some of my stats um, but it was my own thing so that's how I got started and once I had that going on my site once you put sponsored post product review giveaway any of those keywords anywhere on your site you start showing up so when the PR companies are out there looking they're like oh this person does them let me go contact them so that's how I got started Holly before business to blogger how did you get started yeah it was really um, all about relationships and because I've never been anybody who does giveaways or reviews and so you know, I really had a traditional mom blog to begin with, just me talking about my kids. And so, like, it hadn't even occurred to me that that would fit in with some sort of sponsorship, you know, relationship and that kind of stuff. And so, but because I've stayed true to what that is, it has opened up a completely different path for me where I've worked with, like, the Texas Beef Council, doing recipes for my family. Um, you know, I've worked with, like, the things that I love, you know, like, who doesn't love beef? I'm a Texan, you know. <laughs> and um, and then also, like, the California Strawberry Commission, you know, like, strawberries are my favorite thing in the entire world. And, you know, like, just, and the cool thing is, is because I was writing about what I loved, these people found me, you know. Wow. I mean, like, and so I have never gone out and beaten the bushes. And, be, and I think part of it was being, you know, kind of early in that mom blog, mom blog space. I think it's also that I claimed mom blog so that when you search mom blog, hopefully I'm coming up and, you know, I work on the SEO for mom blogger, Dallas mom blogger, mom blog, so that people, because I was like, what do I want people to find me for? And so that's where I really made sure that my about page was keyword sensitive with those type of things. So then once I started getting all these offers that didn't seem to apply to me and sending them off, 
once business to blogger business to blogger was really was really born on all those all those opportunities said to me initially because <laughs> like, I would send them back a little note that says hey I don't do this but I have a company that can help you and so those those that early year of business to blogger was literally we hadn't done any we'd never done any advertising it's literally word of mouth from people who had contacted me or a few other bloggers who were like really rooting for us which I just I mean the support in the blogging community is just Crazy good. <laughs> karma you talk about. <laughs> yeah, yeah, karma. I think karma is a really good thing. <laughs> so basically what it boils down to is write about it. You know, that's one thing that I've always told lots of people that ask me, how do you do that? If you have a blog, don't write, you know, like, oh, we had this awesome cheese for supper tonight. Write, we had... Philadelphia, cream, cheese, whatever. Write your brand names. If you're using a brand name, write it. Because like Holly said, they will find you. They will find you. I, I didn't reach out to Kraft. I've been working with Kraft for four years now, I think. And they reached out to me. They were like, oh, you write about us. You must love us. Well, I do. I actually use Kraft on a very regular basis in my house. So, yeah, write about it. Then if you really want to up your game, go into places like Business to Blogger and look on the job board. And I'm frozen. Oh, there I went. Look <laughs> on... <laughs> it always freezes you at the weirdest spots, doesn't it? <laughs> Compromising facial expressions, yeah. <laughs> go to places like Business to Blogger and fill out your resume and then start applying for the jobs. Um, yeah. and I'd like to say one thing about the practice. And I think practice of writing sponsored posts is way undervalued um, because if if like you you will only publish a certain type of thing on your blog don't compromise that for a sponsored post or a review or a giveaway make those the best things on your site because that's otherwise you're going to lose your traffic from the the loss of authenticity and I like when I go back now and pull my favorite posts so many of them are sponsored it's ridiculous and I think it's because I like overwork those <laughs> you know like I spend a lot of time I really want it to be authentic and so like that time and the extra photography you know thinking about how things are laid out and how I'm gonna promote it all that stuff helps me come up with a package that's so attractive. That's even more attractive than my normal posts on my blog. <laughs> so, right. And you can get better just by doing it. I agree. I and I think for me, whenever I did the initial reviews, that was the way I was thinking. Is I needed to get good at this and build this in my head, this resume for doing reviews and giveaways, so that you know I could show a company this is what I can do or this is what I have done. Um, Kelly, do we want to have Holly take us, do a screen share and show us kind of what the business to blogger job board looks like? And yeah, I don't know that I'm going to be able to do that since it's not putting me in the big box. Here, I can put you on the big box. Oh, can you? Okay. Yeah. All right. Let's see. Screen share. So okay. I think sometimes... Um, I think it's really good to get a view. Sometimes when we go to these places and there's job boards, it can be hard to understand what we're looking at. So I thought it would be a good, Kelly and I thought it would be a good idea to have Holly kind of show us the ins and outs of um, how their site works and how to apply for these um, opportunities that are on their board. Okay, Holly, so can you, uh, can I what? Can you like, uh, well, sort of zoom your screen so that it's a little bit easier to read? Um, I think once I get up in there, it will. The resolution will go. Will be better. The, I just meant like make your words bigger and all. Yeah, I don't think so. I think okay. I'm stuck on my laptop. It keeps switching her out of the box. Though. See, there it goes. Okay, so it's in the box for me. Okay, it is it's for me now. Um, so this is the front page of Business to Blogger, and um, basically, it just it. If you're a blogger or a business coming for the first time, then you click on I'm a business or I'm a blogger to set up a, an account. And those are separately because the businesses are the ones that would, and that we have people that have both accounts. Like if you have a small business and also a blog, that might, you might be, end up on both of those. But if 
you're a business and you want to post jobs, you would sign in with the business. And if you're a blogger and want to apply for jobs, you would sign in for the bloggers. Um, and then I'm going to go to the job, actual job board next. Um, is that showing up? Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay, okay cool. Um, so anyway, this is what the job board looks like. And you can see, um, like right now we have 16 jobs on the board. And they, um, at the top are the ones that are worth the most money, and the ones at the bottom are more of the com commission-based or, um, like, and the value is determined on basically what is exchanging hands. And so if you have a book review of a book that's worth $12, it will show a compensation in that range. And um, at the top, there are featured jobs, and those are the jobs that would be featured in our newsletter each week. Um, the companies have a... Um, a way to pay a little extra money to get featured up there. Um, and those are usually the ones that um, they just need a few more applicants in there. So um, like you can see, everything from um, somebody needing help running a Pinterest account to a free breathalyzer <laughs> to blog about it, I think that's a really interesting one. Um, the Christian Parenting Handbook, um, not only can you review that, but then they're going to give you a whole bunch of extra goodies for your self or to give away which is really kind of cool so and that's the beauty of it is it's really creative um it's whatever a business can come up with they can post it here there's no rules as far as we just require them to stay within the FTC and Google guidelines awesome. that is so I thank you so much for showing that I, I think it's really I love your first page and how easy it is it says one two three and you know exactly how to you guys have it set up very well. I really love it. It's very easy to use. What do you think, Kelly? What else did you, um, did you have any other questions about the job board aspect of it? No. Um, do we have I, any I mean, viewer questions? Huh? I'm sorry. I was going to say, do we have any viewer questions yet at all? We do. Um, JC wants to know, my computer is really lagging, so give me just a second to get back over there. Oh, when you receive a product for free to review, do you have to claim the value on your taxes? Yes. <laughs> You yeah. have to claim it as income. Um, so you have to weigh, is the free product worth the taxes that you're going to have to pay on it? Because at the end of the year, you're going to have to pay, and you should be claiming it as income, and you're going to have to pay taxes on it. Um, sometimes it is worth it. You know, whenever I, I actually reached out to Kenmore and asked Kenmore for appliances and that I would write about it. And when I did, I... I mean, I knew off the bat that if they gave me appliances that I was going to have to go out and buy anyway, that it would be worth it for me to pay the taxes on it. And so I didn't ask for any monetary, um, I didn't ask for any money for it. I strictly asked for the product and offered up what I could do. And it worked because, you know, I have $6,000 worth of appliances sitting in my kitchen from Kenmore, but <laughs> pay me. <laughs> or I have to pay taxes on them, so... <laughs> Well, and it's also something that you want to weigh when you decide if you're going to take a job or not. Is like, you know, you you know, you think about the time it's going to take you, like, you know, kind of the use of your influence and that kind of thing, and then the tax implication as well. And so sometimes things are going to be worth it, and sometimes not so much. But um, that's just something you need to weigh to make sure, because this isn't about like how many reviews you can do. It's about fitting stuff for your blog and into your life as a mom, most likely. And let's talk about that a little bit. I think one of the biggest issues these days is a product review. If you want to be a product review site, and that's all you want to do is product reviews, you know, like, um, what, is it called CNET? Stacy's a big one. Do what? What did you say? Were you trying to think of an example? Yeah, of like a product review site. Simply Stacy is a really big one. Yeah, but she doesn't just do product reviews. I'm not talking like a mommy blogger. I'm talking like your actual, you know, what is the one that's the commercial Ask Angie? Ask Angie okay. is strictly a product or service review site. She doesn't do anything else. She doesn't talk about her kids. She doesn't talk about her travel places. It's strictly a product review. If that's what you want to be, okay, that's a whole nother ball game. But my guess is... That's not strictly what you guys want to be. If you're here doing this, you want to be able to write the things that matter to you and still get quote unquote free stuff or still get money on your site. Then if that's what you're doing, then you really need to rethink the whole 
I want to do product reviews thing because it's not necessarily a review. If you write, like Holly said, she writes about parenting, she doesn't actually do product reviews. She has products on her site that she does say, you know, whatever about. She does kind of review it, but it's not, this is the product, these are my thoughts, these are the pros, these are the cons, here's where to buy it, the end. It's, you know, we went to the park and we played with the bubble blower or whatever, and this is how it, this is how the kids enjoyed it, and here's some pictures of them playing with it, and this is, you know, we're going to pack it all the time, every time we go to the park now, because it's so much fun. She actually talks about that product and how it's being used in her everyday life. Well, and yeah, I do, and that's because on my blog, that's what fit. And, you know, I tried to get all, I tried professional writing. <laughs> you know, I can't do it. Like, I need italics, and I need bullet points. So, um, it just, my voice doesn't do well with the serious. Like, if I can't throw in a joke somewhere, um, I, I, it's just not me. And so, that's one of the things, like, when, when companies do, like, it, like when, you know, like, like toy companies of toys that my boys use on a regular basis approached me. Like, I, I did one recently for the Lego YouTube channel, which, of course, like, the boys would spend 12 hours a day on that if they, if I would let them. Um, so, like, it's more about how that fits into our life and our experience with our life with that product. It's not a review. It's more like, this is, this is how we live and this is how this fits in. It's more, I think it's more about, it goes back to what I've said on, in almost every one of our videos. It's about making it relatable and personal and conversational. I think that all three of us write on our blogs as though we're having a conversation with someone, opposed to factual, editorial, diff, here's the info, take it, and go. Now go buy it. <laughs> you know? <That's> serious. <laughs> yeah. and I have some like that, and it does fit my site because I am Three Boys and a Dog is kind of a product review site, but I don't have very many of those. The only ones that I have that are like that are the ones where they've said, hey, we're giving you X amount of dollars, and this is how we want it written. And, okay, I, you know, I do like that stuff, or I do use that stuff, but you're giving me X amount of dollars, and you want it written strictly like a product review instead of my personal experience. Okay, fine. Here's what it is. Here's what I think. Here's my pros. Here's my cons. Yeah, I Kelly, I, I used to take those two, and then I realized it was it was not fitting. It, it, I was stressed out about them. It wasn't necessarily that like it, you know the my my public didn't like them or something, but for me that was a stressful situation to kind of pigeonhole me into a certain style of writing. And so now I like I turn those down because it's not me. But like if you're able to write that way and it fits into your blog, then go for it. There are more opportunities out there for you because I won't take it. <laughs> See, no, I don't agree with that though, Holly. I don't think that's true. If they're reaching out to mommy bloggers, most people, if they're reaching out to mommy bloggers, they want the personalization of it. Otherwise, yeah. they could send it to any magazine out there or, or but, like Angie's List or but, whatever it is. There, I, in fact, I have a company that I worked, I've worked with for several, several years that I'm having to kind of cut loose because their clients are telling them we need this, these six things mentioned in the post. Well, I could do that if it was a real technical review, but when I'm out in the park blowing bubbles with my boys, there is no physical way <laughs> to work those six points in without just sounding ridiculous. And so I had to tell them, like, I, like, if you have something that gives me a little more leeway, I'll send it my way, but if you're sending me something that has six or more points that I have to work into a post of 500 words, that is not going to work for me. Um, and, it, and it's all about knowing you, because it's, like, again, I don't think my, my readers would have a problem with it, but it stresses me out. Like, I cannot figure out a way to work them in. You know, so it's more about me and, and what I'm comfortable with. And this goes back, Crystal, doesn't, don't you think this goes back to what we were talking about the other day about the 10 things I hate about your blog? Mm -hmm. If your blog is a certain, I mean, mine, obviously, I have eight contributors. So the voices vary on, on three boys and a dog. And so we can get away with a whole lot more on that than we can on, on other sites. But like on Southern Mom Cooks, Southern Mom Cooks is very specific. It's Southern 
mom cooks. <laughs> you, you can't you can't deviate from that. And right. so that's what we went back to a while back when we talked about the 10 things I hate about your blog. If your blog is very niche specific and you deviate from that, you're going to make the companies mad because that's not what they want your blog to be about when they gave you this product or gave you this money. You're going to make your readers go, what in the world are you talking about? And you're going to make yourself feel stressed out because that's not what you write about. That's not what you love. That's not your your voice. So back to that. What, what do you well, think? It's like if I went to Southern Mom Cooks and I saw an ad, or not an ad, but a, a post about football, I'm going to be like, Kelly, this is so random. But if I went to Southern Mom Cooks and saw a post about Super Bowl food, that's completely different. Mm -hmm. So uh, that that right there sums it up. I mean, you really, but it's like you just said, you have one blog where you can get away with that because you you have created that space. You have created that voice to be something where you can um, share different things with readers. But you've decided that Southern Mom Cooks is going to be just a certain way. And so in turn, that's what your readers expect. And I mean, that, that essentially sums up where you're going with it and, and what making, keeping it authentic as Holly yeah. said, go ahead, Holly. I have that situation on kids activities blog. Like we mm -hmm. publish two kids activities a day, <laughs> like kids mm -hmm. activities. And it always just baffles my mind when I get somebody approach me and they want to be on kids activities blog. And when I write back and say, I would love to feature, you know, you or your product. Um, and the way we do it is it will have to be a kid's activity that uses your product or features your product. And we're very creative on that. Like we can pigeonhole just about anything into a kid's activity. Um, but you know, the, kid, the the activity is front and center. And then they'll come back and say, well, that's, we want you to do this. And I'm like, okay, hold it. You chose my blog because it's very, very niche. It's kids activities. And it, it goes to a mom reader with kids under the age of 10 that you want, but then you're not going to give me the freedom to actually highlight you in the most positive way possible. Then we can't work together. Okay. Um, and you know, that's a really big thing. Guys, as you're first starting, don't just take every opportunity that comes. I know. Oh, I know that you want to because you want to be able to say, oh, all these companies are reaching out to me and I'm working with them. And look at my blog because I have all these companies on it. But if you if you do that now, then later it's going to be harder. You can't expect the money and the this and the that when you've totally changed your, your blog and you're not following your niche anymore. Um, <laughs> I really believe in, like, in a, this isn't for just brand new bloggers, but for, for people who are getting established and for established is, I believe every no is a, actually opens a door. And the reason for that is because every time you turn down something that's lucrative or, you know, or you're like, oh, I hate to say no to this, but it just doesn't fit, it, it, it further niches your blog and makes you your blog more authentic and so it's going to open the door for bigger and better things down the road and yeah it makes you more exclusive mm -hmm. I, I have something really great to add to this conversation and my channel completely distracted me and I have no idea what it was <laughs> everything you said for like the last two minutes I'm kidding I'm kidding keep going I'm sorry <laughs> I'm so, so sorry I know what I was going to say I was going to say it was based on what you two were saying that um if you start, you, this is your blog, you make the rules. And when you start letting others take advantage of you, you're setting yourself up for a, a recipe of disaster and a nightmare. This is your site. There is nothing like a company contacting me and saying, we would like to do this. And I say, well, that's not how I handle it. Basically what you just said, Holly. And then they come back and they're like trying to tell me. I'm like, honey, I, I invented this. I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> you don't need to tell me what this is. I know what this is. So you just have to find a polite way to say, it's, it's the suggestion that you kind of gave um, earlier, Holly, that's not a good fit for me, but let me kind of tell you some people that are, and then I yeah. send them to Kelly, or make it her nightmare, or whatever. <laughs> so, okay, Kelly, go ahead. Thanks, Crystal. <laughs> 
Well, and let me let me put a little plug in for Business of Blogger because yeah. I think it's a really good way to do that. Is um, Business of Blogger has an affiliate program, and um, the cool thing about the affiliate program is all you have to do is it's on the website. You sign up as to be an affiliate, and you're given a little link. Well, in my, my brain, you don't have to write a post, post or you know tweet it or anything like that. The most effective way of using that affiliate link is in these pitches that come to you that don't fit your blog. And so what you're going to do is you're going to send back an email to that very nice person who is in desperate need of a blogger and you'll say, I am so sorry, I, that is, this is not a good for, fit for me right now or the timing isn't good for me, but it sounds like you're looking for bloggers and if you are, you know, Business of Blogger has a way for you to do that for free, and then you don't have to cold email thousands of bloggers on this anymore. All you have to do is tell the bloggers what you're looking for, and people who are interested will apply. And then put your little affiliate link in there, and you are sending you are sending your affiliate link to someone who's looking for bloggers, and you're going to get 30% of whatever that company spends at Business of Blogger, which is just crazy because it's like you didn't even work. Mm -hmm. but, but, you know, that's what goes back to the whole don't stray from your niche. And that's one of the reasons why you don't want to stray from your niche. Because if people are there, for example, looking for recipes and looking for cooking tips and cooking tools, those people are the ones that are going to buy your cookbook that you're promoting and right. your awesome pot set that you're promoting on your affiliate link. Because that's why they're there. If you give them, you know, a car jack on a cooking site, they're like, <laughs> number one, they're going to leave your site. Number two, that has absolutely nothing to do with the reason they're there. The exact same thing that Holly's saying to send your link to your affiliate link for business to blogger to the people that are looking for bloggers, not to put it on your site. Who cares? Your readers don't care about your affiliate link. No, and I mean, you might send it to your, or you might tell a few friends, hey, you know, I've had success at this and go, go sign up too. But on the other hand, like, I've even done it on ones that I'm interested, you know, say, hey, I'm really interested in this, and if you're looking for additional bloggers, you know, too. But the cool thing is, is what I find is, like, I, like, I get kind of irritated after a while of how many crazy bad pitches I get in my inbox, and then what this has helped me, like, calm down about that, <laughs> make a few bucks off of it. <laughs> but also, what's the most amazing thing is a lot of times I'll get an email back from one of those companies and they're like, oh my gosh, thank you so much for responding. I've sent out 300 emails today and you were the only one that responded and you responded with something helpful. And so all of a sudden that company, instead of having that bad taste in their mouth of me being one of 300 bloggers that didn't even care to return their um, email, is all of a sudden I am now a resource for that company. And they're like, oh my gosh, this girl in Texas totally got us on hooked up with something that, you know, is really helpful to us. And suddenly we're not sending out a thousand emails a day. We're posting a job once a week on the job board. Mm -hmm. I love that. That's so good. And you know, um, Another thing that this goes back to utilizing Holly's um, business to blogger, but also taking care of your tribe. Something that I like to do when I see a job, Kelly and I have done this for each other and we've done it for other people. So when I see a job that's posted, like I have a friend, um, Susie Cutie Pies, who does um, a lot of, she assists a lot of different bloggers. Hey, Susie. <laughs> hey, Susie, if you're watching, hey, Susie. she's awesome. But there were two more. There were two jobs recently on the business to blogger board, and one was um, creating collage posts, and one was running someone's Pinterest. And I know she does that. And so I sent her a message and said, "Hey, make sure you apply for these if you're looking for more work." And then Kelly will say, she'll email me, "Did you know that business to blogger is looking for a Dallas blogger for Medieval Times or whatever?" And you, we take care of each other that way. And that's part of the beauty of your blogging tribe and and using. The, the blogging tribe and things such as what Holly's here to share with us today to work together so that we can all succeed together. Okay, okay, y'all. Oh my God, we've been talking for fifty minutes. I know. <laughs> <laughs> this could we go have on. Ten forever. minutes left, and we didn't even cover all the things that I wanted to cover. Um, so if we can, let's get into our three tasks and try to go over those real quick for everybody out there that's watching. I, we gave you a ton of information. But we have a ton more that we want to give you, so be sure to come back next week and we'll cover part two. Um, and we'll talk about more how to write it, 
where to advertise if you have giveaways and we'll talk about some more places besides just business to blogger to help get your name out there to the PR companies. So okay, what are our tasks? Did anybody write those down? Well I did, I did, but Holly had some super good information. So Holly, I will say the task and then if you want to elaborate, because off camera you were giving us some really good info that can kind of elaborate on all this. So for a beginner, you want to make sure that your blog has links to all of your social media profiles, which we've already talked about in other in other weeks. So Holly, go ahead and from your perspective, when you're looking for a blogger, why is that important? Okay, so I have a company that wants um, 30 bloggers, and I have 300 people, 300 blogs that I'm going to go look at. Um, to find those 30 um, blogs. And so I've narrowed it down to 300, but I, the next step is me going to each of these sites. And one of the things I need to do while I'm there is take a look at the blog, make sure they've been blogging for a while, you know, it's not just a one post deal, you know, <laughs> that their social media stats that they have um, reported are, are, you know, coincide with what we're expecting. And that it's, you know, just that it's a site that we want to work with. And one of the things that drives me insane, because I want to be in and out of that blog in less than three seconds. Like, you know, I have to go through 300 today. So if I spent five minutes on every blog, this, you know, I would never make any money. Like I have, you know, it's a very small margin of error on these things. <laughs> and so if I can't find what I'm looking for on your blog within the first few seconds, I have 299 other applications, applicants that I'm going to go to. And so make sure in the upper right hand corner <laughs> you have all your social media, your Twitter, your Facebook, your whatever. Now, okay, now that you have that and I found that and that and I can see that you have more than a few posts, the next thing I need you to make sure you take off your blog is anything yeah, This is number two. This is number two. Okay, yeah. <laughs> um is anything <laughs> is anything that does not help your cause, okay? So like if you have an outdated Google Friend Connect widget that has three followers, take that off your blog. That is not helping you because when I send my company over there to approve you and they're like, well, they only have three followers and I'm like, you don't understand. On Twitter, they have 2,700 and on Facebook, they have 10,000, but they're like, no, they have three followers. That's what their blog says. So take a serious look at what you're advertising to, you know, so make sure anything that you have that's big and bold and, and broadcasting is positive and is, is helping your cause instead of hindering it. And that's one of the things I do. Like, if I am just starting out in a social media site, like, um, like if, let's say you just started in Google+, Plus, do not put a widget that tells how many people have circled you until you have a respectable number of circles. <laughs> just I agree. A button. So just make sure that you have to remember that the people evaluating you for this job are going to spend less than five seconds on your blog. So make it a good impression. Well, and the third thing, Holly, was you said um, what a blog looks like, not being too flashy, and sometimes it's the cuteness that's over the traffic. So go ahead and elaborate on that too, Holly. Yeah, um, like we talked about before, some companies have in their mind like the perfect blog. And so if you have that perfect blog, then you're going to get it no matter what your traffic is within reason. Um, because I will probably end up using you in a bigger group of blogs that have some more traffic, even if you have lower traffic. So that's one reason if you have a highly niched blog, but not as, you know, and you're just getting started or you're just a few months in or don't have a lot of traffic to that blog it's still okay to apply for some of those things because the, the company may be looking for you. And if you didn't apply, we won't know you. Um, so the other part of that is if you have, like, if you have a highly trafficked site, and I, don't, I can't tell you how many times I have presented brilliantly trafficked sites. Like, I mean, just like would blow my stats out of the water to a company and they're like, yeah, um, those blogs are ugly. Ah, like, <laughs> don't want to have an ugly blog. <laughs> because the thing is, is it's a, that first impression is so important to companies. It's more important than your traffic a lot of times. And um, you have to get the traffic to get to the table, but you can get thrown out of the room by just having a lot of busyness. And what companies love is that clean, 
you know, kind of a breath of fresh air, something that if they put their advertisement on would show up. And that's what a lot of us, I think, have lost track of sometimes, is we have so much going on that um, we don't have any way to highlight the message of the person that would hire us next. And so if you can declutter, take everything off your blog that you don't need. If it's not making you money, take it off. If it's not required, take it off. And then just step back and see what it looks like from a distance. And if it's still going crazy, go back and reevaluate. You've got to simplify. Yeah, and let's talk about that. I know that a lot of us, when we first start blogging, we go sign up for you know all the nine million places to get our name out there. And every one of them says, you have to have our button on your blog. Well, you know what? It doesn't have to be on your home page. No. I, it I doesn't. Set up, you, yeah. I set up a tab on my site that says networking and on that page is all the different little tabs, all the different little places that my name is for whatever reason. It's not on my home page, it's not taking up valuable retail space on my sidebars or on my header or whatever. So Yeah, just, and the other there. option to that, I love that idea. The other option is your footer. Because, you know, you can run a whole bunch of buttons across the bottom of a footer if someone requires it on your front page. Then, you know, it's just a little line of cute little buttons at the bottom. And it's not something that when I come and look at above the fold, when somebody looks above the fold, it should be like, like a breath of fresh air. <sighs> I've arrived at the blog of my dreams. That's what and, you want, people. And that, and that above the fold, this all goes back to, I mean, you are singing our praises. This is exactly what we talked about last week with the 10 must-have elements and the 10 things we hate about your blog, and we're not trying to be mean, and we're not picking apart any of your blogs because we promise we love you all. But this is what we're saying. Here it is again. These are, she said, above the fold, social media buttons. She, that's what she's looking for. That's what we told you last week. She's mm -hmm. saying keep it clean. Keep it. She has three seconds. It needs to load fast. That's what we told you last week. This is this is true stuff. So we need to be implementing those things so that you can secure relationships with business to blogger and with the companies that she's promoting or the companies that she's trying to match with bloggers. And I'll say one more thing that if you're designing above the fold and you're cleaning it up, the one thing I might leave is your profile picture with your actual face and the reason for that is because they're hiring you they're not hiring your blog and so when I come to the blog I'm like oh my gosh I love this and look how cute she is that's <laughs> what you want <laughs> like, so I don't care how much you have to Photoshop but this is your time to make yourself as skinny and <laughs> <laughs> It's your time to fan. That that profile picture should be like <laughs> glamour. Like <laughs> Yeah, yes. I agree. Okay, so well, now Kelly, were you gonna say something else or are yeah. we gonna move on to advanced? Yeah, let's move on. We've got three minutes. So let's okay, so, so for the advanced, um Kelly, you highly suggested a media kit or at least an email that you can pitch back that shows well, we're not really talking pitch back yet, but uh, an email that you can send back with your information. So did you want to elaborate on that a little bit? Yeah. Okay. Everybody should have something where you sit down and you come up with your thoughts on what your blog is about, what you write, um, the different categories or whatever that you cover, what your basic stats are, um, where people can find you, maybe some of the companies like the really big awesome names that maybe you've worked with in the past something that highlights you that you can send to companies that says hey this is who I am this is what I do this is where you can find a product review on my site this is where you can find a giveaway on my site this is where you can find a sponsored post whatever it is that they're looking for so that you point them straight to that and you can point them straight to that one that is just really stinking awesome and it doesn't have to be, you know, this big fancy where you go spend three hundred dollars on a media kit. Just something that looks professional and that's right there. And I wish I would quit freezing in the weirdest looks. <laughs> <laughs> You're fine. Okay, and then number two is to um, reach out, or as uh, Holly says, pitch back, and as Kelly says, repitch. So, do you want to talk about that? Yeah, I'll, I'll mention that. Um, if if, this, if there's hope in something that you're pitched, 
or you could tweak it a little bit or you think oh you know that might I know something that would work a little bit better I am a big believer in the pitch black pitch back where just you know write back and say I would love to work with you um, what I found helpful is X Y and Z or hey if we switched it this way or if you paid me or you know throw in your your wish list there and they can say no mm -hmm. they can say no but the thing is, is when they no. don't say no when they don't say no you are at a different level of participation in that because you help design it and your your input is valuable to that person and so they're not going to be as high maintenance as some of the other ones and because it's more of a team when you're doing that which I love. Mm -hmm. Did you want to add anything to that Kelly? Um, yeah, I do a repitch. I re I call it a repitch, like Crystal said, and I repitch just about every single thing that comes in my email because I've been doing it for so long, and because my main site is pretty much a product review site. I get literally thousands of pitches a day. Every single day, I start out my email with like twenty, and I end up my day with like three thousand. <laughs> and I repitch just about every single one of those. I have a template set up that basically says, thanks so much for reaching out to me. I'd love to work with you. And here are my prices. Or here's what I'm willing to do. It doesn't have to be and, prices and it ha I don't put my stats in that. Re I, and I just kind of, what was that? Did you guys, Crystal, were you talking? Freeze every once in a while. Yeah, that's okay. Go ahead. I just yeah. said, you said these are my prices. But if you're not at a point where you want to do that, it could just be, here's what I, Here's what I'm willing to do, or here's what I'm willing to exchange, you know, whatever. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. So, yeah, you want to do whatever you offer, and you need to make it different. Come on. It has to be different. One of the things that I, am um, just going to throw this out there, one of the things that I do with my sponsored posts is I offer pins from their site and from my site on everything. Because I have almost 9,000 Pinterest followers, people see that and they oh that's great you know she has almost 9,000 Twitter on um, Pinterest followers what I used to do was offer tweets even though you automatically might tweet every one of your posts they don't know that so offer that up and say and I will tweet about da 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 so offer whatever it is that you're good at or that you have good stats on maybe it's Instagram, whatever it is, offer up something special to make you stand out. And so, yeah, everyone that comes in that I'm not necessarily just dying to work with, they get the repitch. And after talking to Holly, I'm going to add that in there. And if, you know, you're not a fit for me or whatever, because I have those too, I'm going to say, here you go, go to business to blogger. So, affiliate, make money off of those, off that email. Well, we still have one more thing to add to the advance. So, Holly, as our expert, what would be that third thing for the, I hate to put you on the spot. Oh, no, but no, no, because I wanted to talk about this, and I think it has to do with what we were talking about earlier before we went on air, and that is the adult content. Yes. <laughs> okay, so let's say you're a blogger that has been established for a while, and you're working with some of the more adult um, type content, which may be a perfect fit for your blog, and there is no judgment here, because, um, like, I think that stuff is great. Um, <laughs> or the record. No, I, 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 I use that as the clip. But anyway, so but but if you are working with um, with companies that do sex toys or um, adult content that is really severely adult content, you are going to appear differently to most other sponsors. And so I have, um, it's something that I have learned to ask companies when I work with them as their consultant. I'm saying, if I'm gonna run your blogger campaign, like let's list out your perfect blogger and how do you feel about adult content or you know that kind of thing. And I would say 70 to 90% of them will, will run the other way with some sort of passion badge on your front page and even to the point where if you have written sponsored content over the last month um, that falls into that category even if it's not on your front page it could be an issue and what has happened to me in the past is I've had to pull bloggers out of, um, of you know campaigns that they were into because the sponsor was so crazy about it. So it's okay to do those things, but just realize that you those will get you more of those and that will negate you from some of the family friendly, you know, all American apple pie type posts. Mm -hmm. 
Very good. Holly, you are such a wealth of information. Okay. I love every opportunity to just pick your brain and thank you so much for coming on and really helping uh, viewers and readers understand what you guys are looking for. Did I freeze up? <laughs> no, actually you weren't. I want to say, I did want to say one more thing as a kind of bonus task. Everybody needs to go to Business to Blogger and <laughs> set up an account. Honestly, I put the link into the little chat box down there um, right below this video. So go to Business to Blogger, set up an account. If you have a business, set up a business account. If you have a blog, set up a blog account. And, you know, get started. Apply to some of the jobs out there and just see what happens. That's an excellent suggestion. And if any of you guys have questions today that we were not able to answer, we are going to expand on this topic. There's so much to talk about with this. So we're going to talk again some more about it next week um, and, and cover some other aspects of it as well. So we will get to your questions. Please just continue to ask them so that we know what you want to know. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, Kelly, do you want to send us out of here? Um, yeah, so next week, because we're doing the whole giveaway thing, I'm going to keep this exact same G Plus Live Hangout page, and I'm just going <laughs> to, Holly, I'm just going to switch out the video so you can find us at the exact same place, um, same time, different day. So, bye, bye guys. guys. Thank you so much. Thank you.